Hello, I'm Adam, and welcome to the part 2 of my eSheen Wizard X220 setup. In this video, I'm going to set up my Flysky FS i6X transmitter to work with my Wizard. Once again, if you're interested in any of the products that I use in this video, I'll link them down in the description below. If you bought an i6X transmitter and X6B receiver set, they should already be bound out of the box. But if they came separately, for example, you already had one of the transmitters and you just bought the receiver to fit in a new model, then you'll have to bind the transmitter and the receiver for them to work. One thing most people seem to find strange about these transmitters is to save any changes that you make in the menu, you have to hold the cancel button. It seems like you should press the OK button, but that doesn't actually work. That clears out the changes that you made. You need to hold the cancel button to save them. Before binding your transmitter to your new receiver, you'll have to select which model you wish to use. To do this, hold OK in the menu. Make sure System Setup is selected, press OK. Then Model Select, OK. Move to your desired model and hold Cancel. Press Cancel again and again. New model is now selected, so turn off your transmitter. To bind the receiver, the Bind button is here. It says Bind underneath it. Hold this button and power on. You get your flashing light, bind the transmitter, hold the bind key here and power on. The transmitter is now bound. When it's bound, it will go solid red. Switch A here is a two position switch. I'm going to use this for arming and disarming the quad. So in the up position will be disarmed and down will be armed. Switch C is a three position switch. I'm going to use this for flight mode. So up will be angle mode, middle will be horizon mode, and down will be acro mode. If you saw my previous video on the hardware setup of my wizard, I fitted a buzzer to the flight controller for the voltage alarm, but this buzzer can also act as a lost plane alarm. So if it lands in some long grass or a tree or something and I'm struggling to find it, I can switch on a buzzer to help me. I'll use switch D here, which is another two position switch. Once the transmitter and receiver is bound, you need to set up the model in the transmitter. Now I'm going to go through the settings that I've made, these aren't necessarily the right ones for everyone, but using these settings got my wizard in the air. As you may be able to tell, I've reset the model on my transmitter here so I can go through all of the settings again. So firstly you need to go into the menu. To do that, press and hold OK. Now in system setup, so press OK. First thing, I'm going to change the model name. Setting the model name is a little bit time consuming because you have to scroll through the different characters just using the up and down key. It's not necessary to set the model name, but it's a good idea because if you have multiple models, it makes them easier to identify on your transmitter. Once you've selected the letter that you want, press OK to move on to the next. Once you've entered your desired name, hold the cancel button to save. Now I'm going to select the type of model. Again, this isn't necessary, as it doesn't actually make any difference to how your model behaves. The controller also doesn't have any quadcopters built in. So I'm just going to change it to helicopter fixed pitch and hold cancel to save. Now I'm going to go down to auxiliary switches. Okay, I'm going to turn on all of my switches and the two variable resistors and set the number of channels to 10. Now I'm going to go into the functions setup and go down to auxiliary channels. In here we can set up the switches to different channels. 
So I'm going to set channel 5 to be switch A, which is the one right on the left. Channel 6 to be switch B. 7 to be switch C. Eight to be switch D. Nine to be variable resistor one, A, sorry, variable resistor A. And channel 10 to be variable resistor B. So pressing OK scrolls through the different ones. Check, double check, channel five, A, switch A, Channel 6, switch B, 7, switch C, 8, switch D, 9, variable resistor A, and 10, variable resistor B. That's what I want, so I'm going to hold cancel to save that. Okay, press and cancel again to go back to the main menu. And now into system setup again. So now that I have all 10 channels enabled, and the different switches and variable resistors mapped to those channels, I'm going to go into the RX setup. First thing I'm going to go into is the output mode. I want to set output to PPM and serial to IBOS. Hold cancel to save that. Now I'm going to go into the failsafe. This is a very important step. A failsafe is what happens if the quadcopter loses connection to the transmitter. So first thing I'm going to do is set channel 3, which is the throttle channel. I'm going to turn that failsafe on, pull the gimbal all the way to the bottom to make the throttle all the way down to its lowest setting and hold cancel. So now I have channel 3, throttle, minus 100%. Now I'm going to go to channel 5, which I set up to be switch A, which I said I want to use as my arm switch. So if the transmitter loses connection to the receiver, I want the quadcopter to disarm. So I turn that on. The switch is already in the up position, i.e. disarm. You can see if I switch it down, the bar at the bottom moves. So I want it up. On. So channel 5 is now minus 100% as well. The last thing, and this really is an optional one, because I fitted a buzzer which I want to use as a lost plane alarm as well as the voltage alarm. I want to set the quadcopter to trigger the alarm if it loses contact with the receiver. This means if anything happens and I'm not able to turn on the alarm myself, the quadcopter will do it automatically. So I wanted to use switch D as my lost plane alarm, which I mapped to channel 8. I'm going to go into that, turn it on, flick the switch down, which I want to be alarm active. Hold cancel. So now channel 8 is at 100%. So I'll hold cancel again to save those and then I can just cancel out of the menu. And that's it. My radio should now be set up. Thanks for watching. In my next video, I'm going to go through the firmware setup on my wizard in Betaflight.